if you know anything about Ajax systems is that they always have some pristine designs. I know for a fact that the CEO is a big fan of Apple and every product he designs for Ajax is made to feel nice and look slick because your alarm security system is part of your home so you want it to integrate that space and look good so it doesn't need to scream hey there's an alarm system here and with this new release which is their touchscreen keypad i feel he hit the nail right on the head like you look at it like this and it feels like ajax is part of telecommunication now and they released a new phone but no it's a touchscreen keypad and today we'll look at it We'll review it and we'll show you all there is to show about this device. Let's get to it. All right, so opening the box, first look at the touchscreen keypad from Ajax. I'm telling you, it's like opening a new phone you just bought from the Apple store or wherever you are. So we have their user manual again. Scan the QR code, download the user manual. This is always helpful when you're enrolling a new product. And here we have it. So I'll remove it right there. And a well-secured uh, keypad here. So, okay. It's heavier than I thought, honestly. Now I take it in my hands. I thought there was many more things in the box, but it's only the keypad here. So, Et voila, so it, it really looks like a phone. It's, it's a, I, I love the design and I feel obviously they, they thought about this, that everybody's using a phone nowadays. So being, having this on your wall just makes sense. And I'm pretty sure the interface also makes sense on how to navigate through it. So we're just gonna look at the physical aspect of it. But first we remove this part. It's always satisfying. Remove the bottom and here we have it. So first off, you have a light sensor on the top of your touchscreen keypad. So this automatically adjusts the brightness depending on the lights towards the keypad itself. Underneath you have their five inch touchscreen. It is scratch resistant too. And here is one of the nicest feature. So this is your entry pass. So if you're using a pass, a key fob, or even your phone. So this touching keypad uh, enables mobile uh, authentication. So through Bluetooth, you can actually use your phone, scan it on the touchscreen, and it will open up uh, the screen for you. Now on the side, so if we look here, we have a buzzer, so it, the, the touchscreen key, keypad emits sounds. I know there's a chime in it. It will emit sound for a delay opening door, closing door, that kind, of, that kind of things. And if we remove the back, because as you know, we will need to scan the QR code to enroll this device. There you have the inside of the touchscreen keypad. So right here, you have a temper switch. So as soon as someone removed the smart bracket, you would receive a notification that your keypad was moved around. And also here you have the 12 volt because this touchscreen keypad is battery powered, but it's one of the devices that have less battery life than the other Ajax device. When we're talking Ajax, it's always about five years, seven years, but this one with all the feature inside is one and a half year. So it's, you, you get better value from it if you connect it with the 12 OBC. And they even added an enclosure right here. So you can pass the wires and it just looks better inside and they don't go everywhere. So here's the inside of the touchscreen. And now we're gonna enroll it in the application and we'll go through all the settings for you to get started. As you know, if you're using Ajax systems, you need your hub to be installed. And by scanning the QR code with your phone, you will enroll your device. So now we're talking about a touchscreen keypad inside your application. So in, with, in connection with your hub. So QR code is behind. I click on add device. I scan. I will name in TS for touchscreen, add device. And when it says add device on your screen, you simply press the power button on the device itself and we have the keypad that is added inside our application. 
we'll go and see it on the application. So everything is getting enrolled in there. Now, I have multiple things that appeared on my screen and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do these things. But first off, and the most important one is how to actually get inside the device because you need to create a password and to do this, you need to access the touchscreen keypad option. So inside your application, you click on your touchscreen keypad, you click on the cogwheel on the top right, and then in the middle of the screen, you will see keypad code. So you access this part, you enter your password. So it needs to be a four to six digit code. When you are finished, you click done, done. And now it's important to click on the back button to make sure it saves in the touchscreen keypad. Now that this is done, let's try to access it again. And there you have it. So now this is another feature from the keypad itself. It will always show you any kind of malfunction that has on your setup right now. Now the malfunction that I have is because my lid is already open on my touchscreen keypad. So the temper detected something, it sends me an alarm. So I will click, I will check. So it will not arm my system right away. Another option I want to show you, and it's one that I found really exciting, is about the Bluetooth connection. So again, by going inside your touchscreen keypad option on the cogwheel, you go down a little bit in the menu and you click on Bluetooth. You can choose the sensitivity of the Bluetooth right here. So we'll go with the normal sensitivity and to trigger it again, you need to click on back. Now this option, as you can see, it says Bluetooth setup is incomplete. That means when you click on the info button that you need to enable the geofence in the space settings. And this can be confusing because inside the touchscreen keypad, there is no geofence option. And this is because it's something you need to enable on your hub. So you need to leave this space, you go inside the hub settings, you click on the cogwheel of the hub, you go down and you activate your geofence. So right now it was disabled. I will click to enable my geofence. So I toggle on the bottom left and now it will work. So now I can access my keypad by using my phone. So I will show you right away. So similar to before, I click on my screen. I want to log in. I use my phone and there you have it. I am logged in inside the device. Now let's go through multiple options. So if I go on the cogwheel here, first stop is the security management. So here you can enable the control screen to do multiple things. As you've seen on the, the screen right now, I have the studio, office and warehouse. This is because I enabled groups inside of my touchscreen keypad. So here I have three groups that are enabled. But by default, when you get your keypad, they're all set uh, to, uh, they're not toggled. So if I go back and I save that option, you will see that on my screen, my groups that are showing here will disappear. So now, as you can see, no groups are available. If you have groups you have personal access to, you should log in. But again, there's no groups option inside the touchscreen keypad. This is another thing you have to do inside your hub if you want to create groups. So I'm going to show you again how to do this part. So going back inside your hub, so inside your application, you go on the option of your hubs and you go down and here you have the option groups. So groups, it means that you separate every Ajax device into separate groups. So if you have a studio, an office, a warehouse like here, you would put your devices in each group and this way you can arm different rooms rather than arming the whole system at once. So now if I go on the warehouse, I see that there are no devices. I click on it. I click on edit and I will add, let's say, um, I will put the valve inside of it. I save and I, now my valve is inside the warehouse. All right, so going back to the touchscreen keypad options, I will 
enable again the groups. So going into security management, shared groups, I will toggle studio, office, and warehouse. I close this option, I go back, and then I click on my screen, and you will see like before that all my groups appears on my screen right there. So it makes it easier to manage uh, either your business or your home. So if I want to trigger, for example, only my studio, I would click on my studio, I will do my code, and then my studio will be armed. So only my studio is armed, not my office, not my warehouse. It gives you more control on what you're protecting in an area. All right, now let's go and see. So again, you cannot change any options if you're, uh, you have an ARM system. So I need to disarm right now to keep on telling you how to use this device. So I disarm the keypad, go back in the cogwheel. Another nice option that here you don't see and will make it uh, appear for you is the automation scenarios. So when you click on this and you activate scenarios management, it means that if you have any kind of automation device, so if you're using a relay, a water stop, if you have the light switch or things like that, you can actually enable them using the touchscreen keypad. So here I would select my scenarios. I only have one in front of me right now. So we will select the valve. Next, I will call it test and it will turn off the water supply when I trigger my scenario. Now the scenario was added. As you can see on the touch screen keypad, there was a little update to enable me to trigger the scenario. I do back. And now on the screen, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, you have scenarios that appears. So I can click on scenarios. The one that I just created was test. So it's right there. If I click on it, you see that my water stop closes its trigger. So the water will stop. So I can control any kind of automation directly with my keypad. Now, if I want to open it up, ideally it would be by creating another scenario that will turn on the water supply that I will call test two. So this way I can turn off and turn on my water signal. As you can see, I add another scenario. It updates my touchscreen keypad and now I access my scenarios. I have the test two, so I click on it and it will open my valve to restart the water inside my home, for example. So again, really practical to have this right on your keypad. And there are many things like that that you can customize on your touchscreen keypad. And this is something I really like about this device. But you need to understand how to navigate through it. So that's why I'm kind of showing you because there is a lot of details on there. Next up is emergency signals. On there is to activate any on-screen emergency. So if you want to have the panic button, panic button, fire, and auxiliary. You can select those. And you can also select accidental press protection. That means that if you just push your finger on the button itself, but really quickly, it will not trigger the alarm. So I'm gonna able, enable that too. All right, next up for you guys, we just saw it, so the access settings, I can use the keypad code. I can give access to a user because again, this is connected to the hub and many users can uh, be on the same hub as you. So if you want to give access to anyone that has your hub to your keypad, you can use, uh, choose user codes only, or you can use keypad and user codes to access the keypad. The next one is another really nice setting. It's a duress code. So duress code, it means it will do a false disarming. What I mean by that is that if a thief come inside your place, he, act, he tells you to disarm your, um, your premise, so all your alarms and your video cameras. So you go on your keypad, you enter this secret code. So it's different than the real keypad code access, and it will send a message to the monitoring station that your duress code was activated, and they will be able to send you help right away. Now, Next up is the screen detection range. Have you seen me do many times so far? 
when you move your hand, so you do a hover maneuver over the touchscreen keypad, it actually activates. So you can change the screen detection range to uh, a lot of settings here to make it seem like if you need to be really close or if you can do it from far away. Then you can also have the mute fire alarm button on your keypad. So if there is a fire siren inside your place, you can actually mute it by going into your touchscreen keypad. You have the pass and tag reading, which is similar to the Bluetooth setting like I showed you earlier. So by using a pass or a key fob, you put it right here on the reader and it will open up the touchscreen keypad. Unauthorized access auto lock. So this is um, if, for example, someone uses your, uh, your keypad and he makes a mistake too many times, well, it will lock your keypad for an amount of time. That, so that can be also really practical. Next is the chime managing keypad. This is something I like because it uses one of the new features of the keypad that I showed earlier, and is that there is a buzzer on the keypad itself. So you can actually use this with uh, a door to plus, for example, to trigger a delay alarm and also make a sound every time someone opens the door. So if you activate this and you go inside your Dart 2 Plus settings, so I'm gonna show you right now. If you go on Dart 2 Plus, Door Protect Plus, my mistake, you go and you activate the chime setting, so you put it at on. And now I can go into sound indication, and from there in beep settings, I can arm all, uh, all my needs. So for example, if I'm using the Door Protect Plus, I will need it for entries delay, exits, and same thing with night mode, and the shine on opening. So you need three things, like I mentioned. One in the touchscreen, one in the Door Protect Plus, and one in the beep setting. So I will activate everything here. I will save it. And now, if I take my Door to Plus, and I open my door. Oh, first off, my mistake. You need to trigger the little bell on the top right. So this way it will do the shine sound. So I open my door and you hear the shine sound. So someone opened the door. So again, it's pretty practical. It used to be with the home siren, but now only with the touchscreen keypad, you're able to do that option. If you go on the display settings, like I mentioned before here, you have a sensor for your brightness, so you can click auto adjust and it will adjust with the environment light around you. And you can also change the appearance. So the touchscreen keypad comes either on black or white, so the physical aspect of it. And you can also change the appearance of the screen to a dark or light mode. So right now we're on the dark mode, but we can go on light and I will show you the difference from here. So saving that aspect, I will open it and there you have it. So now my screen turned to white and I'm pretty sure it's, it, it's easier for you to see what's on the screen from now on. Um, and so that is how to set up your, t uh, your touchscreen keypad all the option there is to it and how to navigate through the application itself. Because as you can see, the touchscreen keypad has a lot of functions, but it also works with a lot of products. So sometimes you need to go in the settings of other products to be able to, um, to set them up. So it just makes it easier for you. So as you've seen, this is fully customizable. You can add groups, you can add scenarios, panic buttons, a lot of things on this new device and it's also using the radio jeweler uh, signal from Ajax so the way it communicates with the hub this radio signal can go up to two kilometers so it doesn't need to be closed by the hub for it to work so again great technology great ecosystem from Ajax I, I love what they're adding to their solution and this one is also a security grade too so really solid for multiple application and it just shows how Ajax adjusts to the current market. So answering the comment and answering the feedbacks of the users. So another uh, detail that I, I like to add with this is the delay that they added with the Door Protect Plus. So by using this and the buzzer sound that we showed earlier right here, 
you can actually enable a delay to the alarm. So if you arm the room that has a door protect plus and you open the door, you can set up a delay sound. So your touchscreen keypad will emit a sound, let's say for 10 seconds to leave you the time to exit the room. And then it will arm all the room for uh, to be protected. So again, it, it's those small details that makes this a great ecosystem and a great solution. So if you like this product, you like this product, and you find all this solution really interesting, tell us more, more about it, leave us a comment below, and we'll see each other on the next one.